This video is an introduction to basic descriptive statistics. We're going to start off with central measures, and I suspect that most of you are already familiar with this. Suppose we have a set of n data points, and we want to find the mean or the average of those data points. Very easy to do. I just add up all the data points and divide by how many there are. The median is another central measure. And to get the median, I have to find the value at which half of the data points are above that particular value, and the other half of the data points are below that value. One thing to note is that mean can be extremely sensitive to extreme values. So if I have a set of data and I have a un very unusually large value or an unusually small value, that can really shift the mean and in this case, the median might actually be a better central measure for the data. Quick and easy example here. Suppose I have a set of 10 test scores, and I've listed the test scores here. If I want to calculate the mean or the average, I just have to add the 10 test scores up and divide by 10. And in this case, I will get an average of 78.5. If I want to get the median, I have to find the value at which half of the data points or half of the test scores are above that score, and the other half of the test scores fall below that score. Now, in this case, I don't actually have a middle test score. What I have instead is two test scores that fall in the middle. And in order to find those middle test scores, you can see that I have to sort the test scores first from lowest to highest or highest to lowest. So now if I pick out those two middle test scores, I see I have a 73 and a 75 falling in the middle. So to determine the median, I'd simply average those two test scores together, and the average of those two test scores would be 74. So my median is 74. In this case, the median is perhaps a better central measure for this data, because you can see that 8 out of the 10 test scores actually fall below the mean. The mode is the value or the response that occurs most often in the set of data. Some sets of data do not have a mode, and other sets of data may have more than one mode. Mode is most useful if you have non-numeric data. For example, in the survey at the end of Models 1, one of the questions was, how often do you watch the videos prior to lecture? And there were four possible responses, always, often, sometimes, and rarely. And the mode would be the response that the majority of the students picked. And that, in the case of the survey, the mode turned out to be often. We can also measure how much the data in a data set varies. A couple of different common measures for that would be range and standard deviation. Range is very simple. It just says, Find the largest data value in your data set. Find the smallest data value in your data set. Take the difference between those two, and you have range. Standard deviation is a lot more complicated to compute than range, but it's also a lot more useful than range in measuring the variation of data. And you can see I've got two different formulas for standard deviation here. One refers to sample, and the other refers to population. They're almost the same, but not quite. Um, first of all, the difference between population and sample is population means that you have access to everything. For example, suppose I was studying the cholesterol level of adults in the United States. The population would mean that I had access to the cholesterol levels of every single adult in the United States, which is very unlikely. A sample, on the other hand, would mean that I've chosen a subset of adults in the United States, and I'm going to look at the cholesterol levels just of that subset or sample from the whole population. Standard deviation is a measure of how much the data actually varies from the mean, and we can see that if we look at the formula. So if I look at the formula, I can see that, first of all, I'm going to take every single data point in my data set x. And I'm going to take the difference between that data point and the average, and I'm going to square that difference. I'm going to add up all of those differences squared, divide by either n, which would be an average, or n minus 1, which would be slightly different than the average, and take the square root of the whole thing. 
Now one thing that you can see about standard deviation is that it always has to be greater than or equal to zero. The higher the standard deviation, what that would mean is that the data is varying much more away from the mean. If the standard deviation is small, that means that most of the data points are clustered right around the mean. The only way I can get a standard deviation of zero is if every single data point was exactly identical to the mean or the average. Both standard deviation and mean are extremely useful measures to determine whether or not test results are significant. For example, if a pharmaceutical company is testing a new drug that's designed to lower the cholesterol level in adults, is it actually effective in lowering the cholesterol? Is the level of CO2 actually increasing? Standard deviation and mean are also useful in quality control testing and manufacturing. Do these particular materials or these parts meet the safety specifications? You may have heard of normally distributed data or you may have heard of it under the term bell curve. For normally distributed data, the mean and the median are exactly identical and you can see from the little graphic here that the data clusters around the mean in the form of a bell-shaped curve. That's the probability distribution curve. With normally distributed data, the probability of the data being within one standard deviation is 68.3%. The probability that your data is within two standard deviations is almost 95.5%, and the probability of being within three standard deviations is 99.73%. As an example, IQ scores are normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. So what this would mean is that 68.27% of the population have an IQ score within one standard deviation of the mean or between 85 and 115, 100 plus or minus 15. 95.45% of the population has an IQ score that is within two standard deviations of the mean. So that would be between 70 and 130, and 99.73% of the population are within three standard deviations of the mean, so they would have an IQ score between 55 and 145. There's lots and lots of data that is normally distributed data. We already talked about IQ scores, SAT and ACT scores, blood pressure, weight, cholesterol level, many, many different examples of data that is normally distributed. All of the measures that we've talked about can be easily calculated in MATLAB and this slide just shows a little table of the various functions that are in MATLAB for determining things like mean, range, and standard deviation. There are also some very sophisticated MATLAB functions for data analysis that are beyond the scope of this class, but you may very well be using them in your upper level statistics classes, and those are things like t-tests and z-tests. Now take this little short quiz at the end of this video to test your understanding.